coming up. We actually bought the first bull 31 years ago. They're just performance machines. Friends of mine, they go, my God, where'd those udders come from? If Bronby didn't work, I wouldn't be using them. Learn why some producers have used Bronby genetics for over 25 years, next on The American Rancher. Hello and welcome to The American Rancher. I'm Pam Minnick. This episode marks the 10th anniversary of telling the Bronby story on this show. Now that's a long time, but there are cattlemen that have been using Bronby genetics even longer than that. One producer on today's program has been raising Bronby cattle for over 30 years. Today we'll talk with him and two other producers who reveal why Bronby is their longtime breed of choice. I've always been in, interested in ranching, but uh, my dad was in construction, uh, heavy equipment, and uh, I, I did that for 30 years, but I always had cattle to come in after after 12 hours of work, come in and, and work with cattle of an afternoon or on the weekends. And I always wanted to, to feed cattle, see them all the way through. I was raised on a feral to finish hog operation and the cattle were something that were just a, you know, something to take up the ground that we couldn't farm. Since we was around hogs all the time, the cattle was something that we didn't get to spend much time with. So one year I was kind of in charge of calving them and taking care of them one fall, because he fall calves. I, I, that's when I really kind of started enjoying them the most. I've tried a lot of breeds over the years, most, most all of them. I started with Bronby 20, over 20 years ago. A friend of mine introduced the Bronby cattle into this, this county locally. I was wanting to feed cattle in the feed yards and uh, he kept talking about them and I looked at them and, and they really sounded like they'd work for me and I haven't left them. They're excellent quality uh, beef and uh, they've grown well for me. No matter what genetics uh, line of Bronby cattle, uh, which I'm sure I've went through 20 or 30 different bloodlines over the years, but they're, they're consistent enough, they, they just keep working. And the feed yard being paid on a grid basis, I have to have cattle that'll work. And uh, if Bronby didn't work, I wouldn't be using them. We were used to cattle that were not the tamest. You know, he was always worried about a foot. He was always worried about climbing a fence. Uh, it was not a pleasant situation when we worked cows. Life's pretty short to work with wild animals. That's just not our country here. We can't do that. But I believe our first bull was about 1993, 94 in that range. My dad went to the, one of the first Bronby Golden Link sales uh, and if my dad doesn't uh, get excited about cows at all. That's not his thing. And when he come back and was excited about the Bronby cows, then I thought, well, maybe that's something I need to look into. So we went to the next Bronby sale and bought our first bull. And then once we had our first set of Bronby calves, and especially our first set of heifers, we realized that how easy it was to work with the with the breed, how docile they were. I'll never forget there was a gentleman in our neighborhood. We just weaned our first set of calves, and uh, we were standing there. And them calves come up to the fence, and he goes, "My goodness!" He says, "How long these calves been weaned?" I said, "Oh, we just sorted the cows off of them here a minute or two ago. You know, maybe a half hour, an hour." And they come up looking at us, and he goes, "I'm not used to that." He says, "We're used to calves running." from us or, you know, bouncing off fences. He goes, you've got something here. And uh, so we've just been building on it ever since that. I've heard on some of the other shows, they call them the old man's breed. And I'm okay with that. You know, we don't like getting run over. You know, we don't like climbing fences. I'd say you're half blood, you're, you're per, you know, lower percentage Bronby heifers. Them being docile, 
and longevity and, and their udders, that's got to be the top things that uh, the breed really has to offer. We actually bought the first bulls uh, 31 years ago. And uh, after a year or two of seeing what the calves done, what the females done, we just didn't have a reason to change. Uh, they just uh, have done everything we wanted them to do and, and uh, haven't really found any holes. So, you know, we've stuck with them. Uh, they've treated us well. The best way we started to uh, show people what the Bromby could do was we just started lending people our bulls that were in off, you know, they didn't have some place to go. So if we had an extra bull or something, we'd loan it to a good friend of ours. Once they have that first set of calf crops, that, that bull sells easy after that. But on our commercial heifers, it's just word of mouth. Once we finally started having the numbers where we could have like 40 or 50 heifers here for people to pick through and look through, you know, they're there just has, I can't remember the last time we've had heifers for sale. You know, we might have 10 or 12 heifers left after our normal buyers, but they're gone within a month or so. It's just, you know, that, that when we get down to that, it's the guy that's want two or three. You know, we need all these people. We need the guy that buys 20. We need the guy that buys two or three. So, you know, you, to have a leftover heifer here, and if they do, usually that's something we're like, it's good enough just to stay with us. We'll just keep them for ourselves because, you know, we're not going to put anything out there that we wouldn't keep for our own. Coming up. You know, you get a cow that's 12, 14 years old and still stand up there with them seven, eight-year-old cows. That's good. It is sure not uncommon to get up, you know, 12, 14, 15, 16 years out of them. Uh, we've got several cows doing that. Braun V females earn their keep and then some. That story is next on The American Rancher. Welcome back to The American Rancher. Braun V females are well known for longevity in the pasture. Their ability to put more calves on the ground over their lifetime certainly translates into more profit. But the real money comes in the performance of Bromby Influence calves. I've been feeding Bromby cattle in the feed yards for uh, well over 16 years. I don't know exactly. I've had them for 20, so I probably have fed them for 18 years. I started out feeding them in a natural program did a great job. They loved them at B3R Meats. Then when they they uh, sold out, I, I fed some uh, to Coleman Meats. And uh, we wound up shifting to, Coleman shifted to Colorado, I believe. So I started feeding in Kansas at Pokey Feeders up there. And uh, they seemed to like the cattle, they just, never had a bad word to say about them and they feed 90,000 head at a time. They wish they could find more of them to feed. Bronvi, well, for the last several years, uh, we've been selling to the steers to uh, Fred Schroeder up in uh, Nebraska, which feeds the cattle the rest of the way out and he sells on the grid and uh, we get the premium. Uh, he likes the way the cattle grade and yield, so he's always paid a real good premium for the calves. Uh, we've been doing that now for six, seven years. Just the fact that we're able to get that premium, whether it's female or steers, we've always been able to get that extra dollars per head, and uh, that's what it's all about right now. We generally, have some of these heifers for sale after they're weaned and backgrounded a while and that's been a real good market also. Replacement heifers that we keep back, we're uh, breeding them heifers to where they're calving at 22 months of age and yet they're maturing out at the size that we want for the for the mature cow. You start that early and be able to get them extra years on the other end, it just all adds up to more money back. 
it's kind of a best kept secret with what the cattle can do. There's people out there that know and understand the Bromvi, and it's just a matter of making connections uh, with these guys. And, and there's getting to be more and more of them all the time. The Bromvi cow, uh, it just has so many pluses, I think. Number one, the disposition is just very, very good. Clean uttered, longevity. Without longevity, it makes it tough out here. It's already tough. You know, you get a cow that's 12, 14 years old and still stand up there with them seven, eight year old cows. That's good. It is sure not uncommon to get up, you know, 12, 14, 15, 16 years out of them. Uh, we've got several cows doing that. 14, 15, 16 year old cows that, you know, still have a nice structured udder, uh, no breakdown on the quarters. We don't have a lot of the issues like with the bad udders and some of the things that we constantly hear the neighbors talk about, we don't have. They're just performance machines. I think it means everything as far as cow longevity. I mean, we don't have a great big herd. We have, we run about 100 cows. And most of the time, if there's heifers saved, it's because we need those new genetics. So it's not so much that we need to replace the cows, it's that we need the genetics or, or maybe we're experiment with something. You'll see some black white faced cows or stuff out here. Well, the producers that buy bulls from us and heifers from us, they want to kind of see what they've already got. If somebody tells me they're gonna put an Angus bull on them or if they're gonna put a Hereford bull on them, I can go out there and show them. You know, here's kind of what they're looking for or looking at and what you expect to see from them. The strongest points the breed has is their percentage females. Them half-blood heifers, three-quarter blood heifers, they're irreplaceable. We really do like the F2s. It just seems like it gives a little more spark to the hybrid vigor. We've seen them crossed with a lot of different breeds and uh, really haven't seen any that we didn't like. They've just always put that extra muscle, that extra rib and uh, top line on the calf. And uh, then again, the female side um, carries through. So uh, yeah, I, I don't see any reason why not to do it on a crossbreeding program. I'm not a purebred breeder. I, my goal has always been to put a good product on the table whether it's at a restaurant or at your home, and just me knowing that my cattle wound up on somebody's plate and they loved it, that's, that's all I need. Up next. Friends of mine that have been in the cattle business, they go, my gosh, where'd those others come from? There's nothing else like them. Adaptability and outstanding profit traits are putting high-grading Bromby carcasses on the rail. You're watching The American Rancher. Welcome back to the American Rancher. For decades, Bronby has been the breed of choice for cattle producers nationwide. That level of history with the Bronby breed is impressive, considering that those producers have plenty of experience with other breeds as well. But because of outstanding adaptability, longevity, productivity, and other traits, keeping Bronby genetics in their herd is an easy choice for these ranchers. I like these cattle because they'll adapt to any climate, it seems like. They've, they've, they're in Mexico, they're in Canada. I think they'd grow in, and do well in Alaska. I've had them in a feed yard in western Kansas in one of the worst winters on record. And I believe that pen went through with zero hospital days completely. Zero death loss, snowstorm, terrible and they just kept on eating. They originated out of the Swiss Alps. We've heard about them as far south as you can think. That uh, They take the heat well. I've got neighbors right now complaining about pink eye and foot rot and 
Like this year, knock on wood, we have not had to doctor a single animal. Between the pigment, the darkness on the hoof, and the darkness around the eyes, uh, they just don't seem to have the issues that some of the others do. There's Grandi cows in the mountains. They, they really thrive up there, you know. They go out in the deserts. They work on fescue. They work out, you know, where the grass is good. It's, it's easy to live where the grass is good, you know. Try where it's tough. And converting grass and other feed efficiently is a trait that Bronvi cattle are known for. Now, after years of residual feed intake, or RFI data collection, the Bronvi Association of America has cracked the code on true efficiency. The Bronvi Association now offers a multi-breed RFI EPD for the entire industry to use in selecting for efficiency when using Bronvi cattle. The Bronve breed has been testing for efficiency for 10 plus years on grow safe equipment and technology. Even prior to that, Bronve knew that they had some efficiency values that are inherent to their breed through testing at the Great Western Beef Expo, where they had a lot of success in identifying different sire lines that were efficient for feed to gain. So Bronve's got uh, 10 plus years of history on well over a thousand animals of individual records to drive their efficiency database, which is then plugged into the multi-breed database of all of the animals tested through GrowSafe so that you can compare cattle for RFI from location to location and year to year and breed to breed. Right now, sustainability is a huge buzzword. And when it comes right down to it, when you select for efficiency, there's nothing you can do that applies more to being a sustainable producer than selecting for efficiency. And where this is going, it's, uh, it's amazing. If a producer selects for efficiency using the RFI efficiency EPD, this is the most valuable tool they have to move their herd forward. Because if you start looking at all the claims that we make in marketing beef, we've looked at uh, uh, sourced claims, we've looked at uh, antibiotic free claims, we've looked at welfare claims. I really think that the consumer out there right now, what they're looking for now is they want to feel good about the beef that they eat. So if they know that it's been responsible for the environment, that it was beef that was raised on less feed with a softer carbon footprint, I really think that that's going to be a marketing tool for the future. And when you look at future applications for selection for efficiency, that's what you're positioning for. It adds the most value the fastest to what you're doing. And, and it does that by, again, taking out the, the subjective opinions of what you're producing. You have hard facts to back up what you're trying to sell. If we can reduce our cost to gain the amount of feed that it takes to produce beef, there'll be a lot of dollars involved in the feed yard industry. So, you know, if they're efficient here eating out of the bunk, they're going to be efficient out in the pasture, and it'll pay off for you in the feed yard. The bottom line for cow-calf operations using Bronvi Genetics is a reduction in overall feed intake while maintaining production, translating into an automatic cost savings. And now, with a decade of robust RFI data and the association's new RFI EPD, Bronvi Genetics are the benchmark in breed efficiency. people desire uh, these heifers and it seems like once you get uh, somebody with a set of them in their hands and they calve that first set of heifers they're easy to sell to next time they understand what it's about they understand that the, the longevity the udders are amazing so friends of mine that have been in the cattle business and not been in it for a while when they come around they go my gosh where those udders come from. There's nothing else like them out there. People, some of their comments are, our first calf heifers have better udders than some of our cows. And uh, to me, that's kind of hard to believe, but yeah, when you go out there and see some of their cows, see the udders on them, you understand that. They milk, and if you've got a cow that don't milk, you're gonna raise a sorry calf. They always raise a calf as good or better than they they are their self. When I started feeding cattle I've always did it as a retained ownership and owned my cattle that that 
keeps the risk on me and that's how I trusted these cattle to do the job and uh, we actually sell carcasses instead of cattle. We get a base price for the cattle and then uh, we're the carcass is priced off of a grid, uh, ribeye area, marbling, yield grade, quality grade, it's all pluses or if you don't have the right cattle it can be minuses but I've, I've always been in the plus category. With a lifetime of experience raising cattle, these and other producers across the country are sold on the exceptional value of Bromby Genetics. James, Dwayne, and Eric have done so for decades, and with a track record like that, it's a safe bet that Bromby cattle can work for you. When I talk to other breeders about the Bromby breed and uh, why, why they're superior, I ask them uh, why did they give us the Hereford breed, the Angus breed, Simital breed, Charlay, and what was the last breed that was imported from Europe? Is the Bronvi, because they kept the best for last. That's all the time we have today. To learn more about the value of Bronvi genetics, log on to Bronvi.org. And to find out more about us, visit TheAmericanRancher.com or connect with us on Facebook. I'm Pam Minnick. For the entire American Rancher team, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Superior.